Hey folks, Technivers here. Welcome to another episode of 3D Thursday. Today we're going to be looking at how to clean a resin vat the proper way. So we're going to be using a silicone pop-up funnel and a mesh strainer. And that strainer is going to remove any remaining particles that may be floating around in that resin that are really, really fine, but could gunk up the works of future prints, ensuring that all of the resin that goes back into the bottle is of the proper viscosity and without debris. That enables amazing prints from resin printers because there are fewer hangups and fewer issues. So stay tuned and we'll go over it all right now on 3D Thursday. The Technivorous channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. All right, so if you don't have one of these. This is a $3 set I got off of banggood.com and it is a steel screen funnel and it is a really really handy item to have. So I've showed you in the past how to use those paper funnels and pour your resin back into the bottle. Although it is a lot easier if you set that paper funnel inside of another funnel However, this stainless steel one, if allowed to drip long enough, is reusable. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to insert it in here. I'm going to make sure there's a pretty decent seal. And I'm going to remove the cover from my LD002R and remove the vat. Easier said than done when the knobs haven't been loosened in a while. And I'm going to just do this as delicately as I possibly can here. Don't seem to have any leakage, that's good. And I'm just going to pour the liquid right into the strainer and fill the cup here. And this should strain out any extra debris or little particles. It's a super fine mesh screen, so. Let that go down a bit before I drain the rest here because they don't want to spill. So um, it does take quite a while to funnel through. Actually, I think I had that sealed a little too well there. You got to be careful um, messing around with it, not to have it go running down the side of the bottle or anything like that. So, all right. So I'm going to slide this off of the screen here, just to get this last little bit. I can't pour it underneath my camera here. Then what I'm going to do, while that drips, is get a hold of the little plastic scraper that came with this guy, and use that to remove any excess that is left on the build plate um, or on the vat right here. So. Um, this was a failed print, that's why this is here. I'm going to go ahead and just pry this up. Generally, you don't want to use a metal spatula on this screen here. I just happen to have this one in my hands. So we'll set that down right there. Go ahead and properly dispose of this piece of plastic. And I can either choose to allow that last little bit of resin that's in there to mix with whatever I'm going to put in there next, or I can do the proper thing, which I'm going to show you how to do in just a second, which is an actual cleaning using the cleaning cycle on the machine. But first, let's get the build plate off. It too is pretty tight here. And it also has the other side of our failed print on there. So 
We're gonna have to get underneath here. This side we're not worried about using our metal on because um, if you get a couple little scratches in there, it actually helps with the adhesion down the road. So this plate doesn't matter if it gets a little scratched up. So there, I've removed that. So we are ready to wipe some of this down before we reassemble it. And then I will show you the cleaning procedure. All right, so let's go ahead and scrape up any excess that we can here because there is still a lot of liquid resin on the plate. You can see it dripping off of here onto the knife there. So we'll go ahead and get that all cleaned up quite a bit up here. And generally, you know, I'm not taking my own advice here. The best way to do this is to wipe it downward because it tends to want to run down anyway. So then you can turn your tool and continue to wipe downward. Sorry about that. I bumped the camera there. Okay, so this guy really needs to be wiped off probably soaked in isopropyl alcohol and cleaned before return to actual service. I am, however, going to set it onto its armature right now. And we are going to remove this. And we are going to place this back onto the machine and we will run the cleaning cycle. Before we run that cleaning cycle, let's take a quick look at our mesh filter here. Uh, everything seems to be pretty well run through. It did catch a lot of fine particles, and you can see them sparkling in the bottom there. Now, those fine particles may not look like much, but they can actually be a make or break circumstance when it comes to your print. There is actually a few drops left in here, and I am just going to tip those up because those little pieces are pretty well caught in the screen. And at this point, you're going to want to wash both the funnel and this guy out in a nice isopropyl alcohol wash. Now you can use water to rinse as well, it just doesn't do as well and it won't dissolve the particles so it can potentially lead to clogs although not a lot of light is going to get through into your sink so you should be fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cap this guy off. We will go run that through the wash and when I come back we will show you that photo cleaning process. All right, so let's take a look at this clean feature. So if you select tool and then select clean vat, it is going to allow you to select an option for time. And you just hit next. And it is definitely recommended that you do not look directly into the light. Also probably want to put the projector lid back on in order to protect your eyes. Now you're looking at this through the camera, so it's not really gonna cause any damage, but you don't really want to be glaring into that while it's turned on. So it's going to expose for 60 seconds, kind of harden the liquid drops that you see in there, and that will make them easier to remove and get everything out of there. The next step, if I was still having failed prints after this, would be to replace the actual build surface itself, or the actual light surface, I mean. So the LD002R does come with an extra release film which is this guy right here. Um, and that is what we are projecting the light into right now. So if that gets too scratched up, you might wanna look at replacing this. We will do a video on that as well. But for now, this video is just on how to switch and clean resins properly. So there's our 60 second cycle. And I'm looking at our plastic here. Let's see if it's solidified at all. And it has quite a bit, but not completely. So. Um, what we want to do in this case is actually home our axis here. So let's go back, go to manual, and go to home. 
because that's going to press some of that liquid out flat and give us a longer surface area and ensure that we are only beaming at one layer. And then when we pull it back, it should either adhere to the build plate, which is what my guess will be, or sometimes it does stick to the bottom surface down here as well. So we're just going to go ahead and let it home. You see it coming into view. And it's a pretty simple setup. Not too much to this. Now, uh, resin printing is amazing. You can get some really great quality prints, but if you do have a failed print or changing in between resins in particular can sometimes be a hassle. You can see that I wasn't the cleanest when I used this bottle and I need to wipe that off. The, uh, the actual liquid resin itself is not good for skin contact or really inhaling the fumes either. So, um, looks like this side's not going all the way down. So, we may have a leveling issue. Yeah, it looks like there's some give there. So let's go ahead and lower that down as far as we can before continuing on. I'm gonna grab my Allen keys here. Uh, the nice thing about these is once you have this thing leveled out, you really don't have to mess with it too much, but it is always good to go back and make minor adjustments as needed. That one's too big, I always do that. This one should be the right one then. And... Huh. It's definitely the right one, it's just a little stripped, that's all. Let's see here. So we just want to loosen these up just a little bit. And... actually do all four of them here um, and then after I do the, the cleaning process I'm gonna want to do this again because um, right now as I'm pressing down in there there is still slightly hardened plastic in there which means that I'm not in full contact with the surface which is what I need in order to get good adhesion of that first layer to my build plate so um, we're not going to tighten these down too much. We're going to go ahead and hit back, back, tool, clean vat, and next. We're running another 60 second exposure, and you can see it heating up, lighting up, excuse me. It is a little bit less bright without the plate removed. And this will allow for a lot more thorough clean if you are short on IPA, uh, I recommend Everclear. Uh, my wife makes a awesome drink called Raspberry Pi in the wintertime, which is basically just apple cider and booze. And I normally have a little bit of Everclear laying around. So that actually um, works really, really well for cleaning this stuff off of things. And it does leave a little bit of a smell, but I, I don't really mind. I'd rather use it to clean. Uh, then drink it straight, that's for sure, because it's, uh, it's dangerous, but uh, definitely works well for a solvent when needed. Uh, I know you can't see the screen right now, it does show just a plain square. Uh, let's go ahead and go to manual. Ooh, and you can hear it pull, which means it's solidified. So did it stick to the top or the bottom? Raise it up by 10 millimeters a couple of times here. And a lot of it still looks liquidy. There are some pieces stuck to the build plate. Uh, but it looks like most of it is down here. Just keep raising it up till it's out of the way. And like I said, you don't want to scratch on this. Oop, that one came off easy. There we go. You don't want to scratch on this with the metal spatula because it can cause light defects when the light's passing through. So we are just going to kind of take our time picking up the pieces, getting underneath them and, and picking them up and not scrap scraping at the corners or anything like that. Okay. 
once this is done, you are once again ready to re-level the bed. And then you can fill the vat with whatever resin you like and start the whole process all over again. If I were to put this into storage for a little while, at this point I would do my IPA or um, solvent or Everclear bath that I talked about. It looks like there's still quite a bit of liquid in the corners, but that's okay. Um, and then I would wipe it clean and then put it away for storage. I, however, am going to be switching to a different resin. It's a skin colored resin. And we will be playing around with that some. But that's just me. You never know. You gotta be prepared for all situations here. And make sure that I have everything out of the way and that I'm getting kind of a smooth run over this. No big bumps that will cause my plate to not be solid against the machine. So let's go ahead and take this guy off. And again, I absolutely should be wearing my gloves. Um, I'm just obstinate today. But this stuff is really not healthy. Um, so you can see the pieces that stuck to the top here. So we're going to go ahead and shivvy those off here. Shivvy, shivvy, shivvy. And replace it. Now we can go ahead and Two that are too big. Jeez. Jeez, that one's too big too, isn't it? This is the problem with keeping all your wrenches in one bag instead of just one set. You grab the wrong wrench three times. Okay, so let's loosen this. Tighten this. Hit the home button one more time, we'll bring it down. Uh, I was just loosening these four bolts at the top here so that when it hits the bottom, it'll just kind of rest there and then I'll push it down flat, tighten them back up like our initial leveling procedure, and then we can replace the resin that we put, took out. So um, we are nearing the end of this process. We're gonna get our two beeps. There it is, and as I said, down on the plate a little bit, and tighten the sides. And we are ready to fill our vat. So that's basically it for the cleaning of the resin tank on the LE002R. As I said, a solvent bath would take it one step further. But if you don't feel like doing all of that, a good wipe down on the exterior perimeters with a rag covered in solvent, at the very least, is a nice touch to keep things from getting tacky or sticky on you. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Technivorous out. Well, that's it guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers, and so far I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel, but they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out, and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link. Check out our Patreon link. Leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.